Hi everybody, welcome back. Those of you who are still here, I noticed that 119 people left the channel during one of my last videos. I don't know what I said that offended some people, but at this point, I can only shrug my shoulders and ask, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to say what you want to hear? Do you want me to lie but be cheerful about it? Or do you want me to be truthful, at least as truthful as the information I get and the research I do via books, websites and online magazines and newspapers? And then, of course, every now and then I have to give my opinion. That is what this channel is all about. And that is why it is my channel anyway so let's start with some good news for a change prince edward the youngest son of queen elizabeth and prince philip finally received his duke of edinburgh title and it was announced today on his 59th birthday and on the screen you will actually see the official announcement and ladies and gentlemen that is how it is normally done not done the way Meghan Markle did it and have one of her folks people telling the media about it normally the palace will inform the public where after everyone else can say whatever they want to but let's continue I am really very, very happy. I think if anyone deserves that particular title, that title that comes along with Prince Philip's legacy, then it is Prince Edward and, of course, his wife, Sophie, because she will now become the Duchess of Edinburgh. Honestly, guys, you know, I'm old school and I still consider the likes of Prince Edward and Princess Anne the real royals. They are personable, sometimes even a little witty, but they are private and stoic. And how strange is it that the blood royals I like the most are all married to people that I like. I mean, I adore Sophie. I like Sir Timothy. I think he's a nice man. And of course, Prince William himself could not have done better than Catherine. Just imagine how wonderful and what fun it could have been if we only had these people to talk about in the royal family. We could have had raffles as to what Sophie or Catherine would wear next and maybe we could have talked more about William and Catherine's events and and maybe we could have spoken about other royals a little as well. Now if there's someone I truly admire then it is Queen Rania of Jordan. She is honestly one of my favorite royals and most likely of course in my opinion one of the most beautiful women in the world. And then there is Mary, Crown Princess of Denmark. What a lovely, intelligent, yet humble woman she is. And maybe we should do that. Maybe we should walk away from the stench and the soap opera the British royal family has become, even if just for, say, one day per week, and pay attention to these other beautiful and courageous women and even their husbands and what they have achieved. But today, alas, is not that day. I'm still reeling from the news that henceforth Archie and Lily will be known as Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Now, I don't know about you, but just the Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet sounds like something from a Disney movie or a cartoon series. I mean, couldn't they have chosen some more royal names? 
but never mind. You know, I have been through this so many times that I do not know how to express myself or how to be clearer anymore. I read through the comments on various platforms and I either feel like crying or I start to develop hives and I, I, I start itching. So I'm going to do it one last time regardless of my irritation. Yes, when Charles became king, Archie and Lilibet became eligible for the prince and princess title as the 1917 titles act so clearly states but being eligible does not mean the baby opens his or her eyes in the delivery room and they are instantly a prince or princess no it is protocol for the monarch to offer it to the parents and for the parents to accept or not. Look at Princess Anne, the daughter of the then Queen. Her children were born a prince and a princess of the United Kingdom, but they are not titled prince and princess because Princess Anne decided that they are so far removed from the throne that a prince and princess title will be more of a hindrance to them than an asset. The same applies to Lady Louise, daughter of Edward and Sophie. Technically, she was also born to a blood royal prince, son of the queen, and fully entitled to receive a princess title, as she is technically a princess of Great Britain, but Lady Louise is also not titled a princess, and for the same reason, the title was offered to Edward and Sophie by the Queen, but they declined it for the very same reason as Anne declined it for her children. Zara, Peter, Louise and James were all grandchildren of Her Majesty the Queen at the time. All of them. Just like George, Charlotte, Louis, Archie and Lilibet are grandchildren of King Charles. Okay. So yes, if a child becomes eligible, the monarch will offer the title and if accepted will bestow the title which means that parliament will be informed via a letters patent it will be announced in the court circular <laughs> press release like the one you've just seen on edward's duke of edinburgh title will be released by the palace okay the royal website will be changed to reflect the new title and in the case of a senior royal like when William became Prince of Wales and Duke of Cornwall the monarch will announce it via a public announcement. The point is that the palace will announce it first but you know Meghan Markle could not do that. She had to trump King Charles, and leak and announce it first. So whatever anyone says or however anyone interprets the Titles Act, the fact is that the Titles Act, the Succession Act and the British Constitution should be read together. Again, the Titles Act of 1917 states that the grandchildren of a monarch are eligible to be prince and princesses, but the Constitution reads at the discretion of the monarch. But you see, that is not where it ends. Although some may consider it archaic or even old-fashioned, the rule of born from the body 
still applies. And today, we have not seen one single document, one single proof of life document signed by the required witnesses for either child. Each and every document, whether it's supposedly a proof of life or a supposed birth certificate, so far had one big error or one big flaw in it, which tells me that it wasn't the original document, but just a document put out there to keep the public quiet. I do not believe that we have seen a correct or original birth certificate for either one of those children. And remember the birth announcement at Buckingham Palace? Not one single signature on that announcement. We don't even know whether Harry and Meghan bothered to apply for dual citizenship for Lily. For all we know, Lily was born in the United States and is a United States citizen. And lo and behold, the United States Constitution states that a United States citizen may not be gifted and use a foreign title. So what is it? Where is it, King Charles III? Where is Lily's British citizenship? And where are the Americans? Why aren't you objecting to a United States citizen accepting and using a British royal title in America? What was your war about? Why did you even bother? Why were people killed to gain their freedom from Britain so many years ago? And now you are willingly returning to that scenario where you have a British prince and a British princess living in the United States and you are curtsying to her in the United States and you are addressing her as the Duchess of Sussex and Princess Lilibet in the United States. Are you happy with that? Are you happy that your forefathers now fought and died for nothing? If you are, then there's nothing I can do about it. Then remember when Harry, during an interview in Afghanistan, said he does not like England much. Well, if you don't, here is the clip of him saying it. I don't want to sit around at Windsor because um, I just generally don't like England that much. And Do you remember Harry saying during an interview at the 20th anniversary of the death of Diana that he does not want to be a prince? Well, if you can't remember that, then here is the clip to remind you. What period of frustration did you ever wish that you weren't a prince? <laughs> I wish that quite a lot, actually. So, the King of England gave the children of a traitor, a man who called his family and country racist, a man who openly admits to using illegal drugs. Yes, the King decided to award that man's children British royal titles. Do you remember Meghan Markle's promiscuity? Her many lovers? Her play for pay days, her previous marriage or marriages, remember her many lies, remember her embarrassing conduct, remember what she accused the royal family of, remember all that and more. Also remember in the good old days, there would have been no way Harry would have been able to marry Meghan and retain his titles and standing in the royal family. I mean, you could have asked Edward and Wallace if they were still alive, but you know who is still alive whom you can ask? Ask Prince Andrew and Coo Stark. Ask Princess Anne and go read about poor Princess Margaret and her first love. Yet, here we are, our newest king bestowing royal titles on the children of an American divorcee with a dubious past and a wilder film repertoire than Coo Stark. Now, 
go home and make that make sense. But yes, you know, the children should not be held accountable for their parents' conduct. But by right, the king now has to take responsibility and provide proof of life documentation with appropriate witness signatures for each child. The children's baptism record should now be unsealed and the palace should be requested to provide proof that Lilibet has British citizenship. There is no excuse anymore. By allowing these titles to be bestowed on Archie and Lily, the king has effectively taken the responsibility upon his own shoulders to provide whatever proof and documentation may be requested by the public or even by Parliament. Remember, the public should be the watchdog, making sure that those in leadership positions stay on the straight and narrow. I heard some people say that now we can be assured that whatever the truth is will be buried six foot under. Documentation can be falsified and surrogates can disappear. And thinking about that, I had to agree because remember the dead woman found in the pond at Kensington Palace? Well, I'm not even slightly suggesting that she is or was a surrogate. But have any of you heard anything about that case again? No, we haven't. Even contacting the constabulary of the area or the supposed investigators assigned yields no results whatsoever. Yet, at one point I thought, well, this is all my imagination. I dreamt it up. Yet, I found the articles. It was all over the newspapers. And it was even reported that it was the body of an artist who was reported missing days earlier. That is, until her brother piped up and said, no, 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 I heard from her only a few days ago. And then she herself came out and apologized for the misunderstanding. So what happened then? Has the police made any progress? Have they found out who that deceased person was? If they have, why haven't they released the information? And if you contact them, they pretend not to know anything about it. So what's going on there? The point is that the power of the king and the palace is such that they can and will bury anything and do it so thoroughly and so deeply that none of us can uncover it. But we shall not forget, Charles, someone maybe just for a laugh, will somehow, someday, collect DNA from Archie and from Lily. Oh, you know, a discarded cup, a cigarette butt, maybe a lipstick, who knows, piece of hair. I mean, it's done all the time. And then, old Charlie, better hope and pray it matches the mommy and daddy's. Otherwise, we will crown him the liar king, the king of fraud, the head of the church of liars. And on that note, my friends, I'm taking myself off for a breather. I am going to consider the future of this channel carefully over the next few weeks. Um, Yeah, maybe just shake it up a little, like I said maybe start talking about the likes of Queen Rania and Mary, Crown Princess of Denmark and other royals and other celebrities. Because quite honestly, my friends, the shenanigans of the British royals are really affecting my mental health. They are becoming, as far as I'm concerned, and obviously not all of them, but it's, it's honestly becoming a soap opera. It's like they're becoming the poster children for how not to live your life. 
And then, um, as I said, I'm not talking about the likes of Edward and Sophie, William and Catherine, but there's so much wrong that it takes the pleasure out of what is good and right about it. And that concerns me and it bothers me. And because I'm dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis, I think it's starting to make me a very negative and maybe even depressed person. But for now, we'll stick to it and we'll keep up to date with whatever is going on. But I will think about it and see how we can shake this up. Maybe if it's just a day or two um, on which we do something completely different. Okay, however, that's me for now. And I'll see you again on the next video. But until then, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.